Hi, I'm Shanna. I am a resin doc who makes videos to help pre-meds out uh, in their journey, providing the support that I wish I had when I was in your shoes. So today I'm going to go year by year throughout uh, my high school experience and tell you exactly which courses I took every year. Uh, for some reason, this is a really popular question that I get and I had to actually comb through, like I had to, I found my old report cards from high school to put this together because I couldn't really remember. So overall uh, a question that i got is are grades are important i personally thought grades were really important in high school uh, more so because having an ambitious target for your grade sets you up to really hone in on your study skills and you know, really uh, uh, push yourself to excel because that's really your grades are really important as you go on to university and um, go on to medical school uh, not so much to get in to get into medical school so learning good habits and also just really learning the content while giving yourself a good foundation so when you go on to university it's also uh, quite helpful and um, yeah so and so my thing is not to push yourself not just to make the honor roll but if you can make the principal's list which is equivalent to the dean's list in uh, university is a really good target to have and what's really helpful is if your grades are really good uh, most, uh, at least in BC, there was a lot of scholarships that if you got to the top something percent of the province, they would automatically give you a scholarship that you didn't have to apply for. And our school had some, I think, top like academic awards as well. And so like if, um, as I mentioned in previous videos, like I think going to university is a you know, really expensive experience. So if you can find any ways to uh, help fund your education in a way that's pretty low effort, like you don't even have to apply, you just have to study really well. So that's what I would recommend. So starting from grade eight, in grade eight, so this was mostly a mandatory uh, curriculum with this particular limits because I was in uh, the mini school program, so it was pretty much set. Um, everyone basically takes these courses. So I took a, I took a combination, this is like um, throughout the year, each term you took a different course. Um, we took business education, home economics, technology education. So basically technology education was wood shop. Home ec was cooking and sewing business education. I actually can't remember what that was. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. It was mandatory for our school. Next up, I took English. I took French. That was the language that's actually pre-chosen by our mini school program. Uh, I think everyone has to take it, but I know there's other schools you can choose stuff like Japanese and Chinese and Spanish. So, um, so that's why there was no particular reason that I uh, chose French. And to be honest, I'm not, sh I don't think I would choose French if it was up to me. I think uh, language like Spanish or working in your Mandarin might be more helpful or whatever variety you have. So kind of choose as you as you like. Um, I took science and a particular part of this program that I was in high school, we all competed in the Greater Vancouver Regional Science Fair, which gave an extra push to it. I took social studies, uh, physical education and math. So the elective courses I took, I chose to take strings, beginners. I had never played violin before, but it was just an interesting challenge. I did that only for a year. And then off timetable, which means, so in my high school, the max number of courses you can take um, during the regular school hours is eight. That's a full course load. Um, we actually had the option to take extra courses on top of a normal full course load. And so we call those off timetable because those often occurred early in the morning and in the afternoon, usually a combo of of such. And so I took jazz band off timetable as my ninth course. So moving on to grade nine, I didn't, I left strings and I played when I took concert band. Um, and that, that helped because when I was in elementary school, I had done a couple of years of concert band. So I just went back to the same instrument and uh, did that. I did English. Again, I did French because I was part of our main school program to do French. I didn't, um, uh, I didn't change the language because the program, but I think at this point, many people do go on to change to Japanese, etc. cetera, uh, whatever language you want. Uh, I took information technology. I really like that. I think we use like HTML and like made little flash games and like contributed to the school website. So it's like a lot of tech um, things on our like just computer related stuff. And I thought those were useful skills to have. I don't think I use them now, but I, I thought it was an interesting class to take. I took math, uh, we took, I had PE, science, social studies, and as my extra off timetable classes, my ninth and 10th classes, I took jazz band off timetable and I took concert choir. So this in the grade nine, I took 10 courses. That was, so it was pretty heavy at times. Um, so I believe jazz band was two mornings a week and then concert choir was two days in the evening after school. And so I so just had to manage your time really well. Um, and I thought those were quite fun opportunities to be involved in. Then the summer after grade nine, I took planning 10 online and I chose eBus Academy. 
uh, I thought that was they were quite great um, and I was able to finish it quite quickly and it was very straightforward so that's a recommendation I have. I think Plan A10 is a very easy course to take online so if there's an opportunity for you I would recommend doing the same in grade 10. So this is when I start kind of trying to accelerate my learning and preparation knowing I wanted to take AP courses when I was in grade 12. So in grade 10 I took biology 11. I took writing 12. So that's a creative writing course. We did poetry and all sorts of other things that we wrote. Um, it was just a very fun and interesting class and that was my elective. I took uh, English, foundations of math. In BC there's a couple different streams of math. Um, I th uh, my personal recommendation is you don't never know how you what you want to do later in life. Um, I believe there's one version of math that's a bit more restrictive and doesn't set you up for doing university math, even though you think you might not want to go into, you know, sciences or engineering. Um, I had a friend who took the I forget what the other math stream is called the, the um, but she took that and eventually she wanted to change her mind and she went back to adult school to finish um, to retake the, like, the math. So you might want to save yourself some effort and just go through the the more rigorous stream. I know it's a bit more work, but uh, it might set you up better. So I took foundations of math. That's what it was called. Uh, in my time, uh, I took French, PE, social studies, science. Um, and then as my ninth and 10th course, I took concert choir again and jazz band. Then the summer between grade 10 and 11 online, I took pre-calculus 11 online. I took this through the BC online school, which is part of the Heritage Christian School. Um, so I thought that was also a good experience. I did find math a lot more difficult to honestly do online compared to planning. Planning was totally easy and I would fully recommend it. Um, Pre-calculus pre 11 was a bit more of a, like a challenge, especially if you have like some things you don't quite get. And um, so this one is like a hit or miss. Um, I did that because I wanted to take AP Calc. Um, and, but I'm, I'm not sure I would do it again because I felt like because I had done pre-calculus 11 there, I felt like my foundation was a bit shaky uh, when I went on to do pre-calculus 12. So maybe don't do that, maybe do it. Just kind of depends on, depends on you. So in grade 11, I took biology 12. I took chemistry 11, English 11, French 11, physics, um, physical education, pre-calculus 12 and social studies. Um, something I forgot to mention is a lot of my friends who were not in the mini school program, they took the summer between 10 and 11 to take physics 11, I believe, and they thought that was really helpful. So if you don't want to take your pre-calculus 11, um, as if you have no intention to take AP calculus, then you could go through the route of taking um, physics 11 so that you can be set up to take AP physics. So um, so some couple things to note that are a bit odd about my schedule. Um, as you see, I'm taking... Um, I thought biology 12 was super useful, very interesting class. I t chose to take physical, uh, physical education as part of our program. I think a lot of people when they get to this stage, physical education is actually not mandatory in the BC curriculum, but as part of our uh, mini school program, we're mandated to do that. And I thought it was actually quite useful. Otherwise, um, like otherwise, I don't know if I would have been as motivated to keep up physical activity. So, um, it's, it's kind of a nice thing to break up your schedule. So. Yeah, if, if it wasn't mandatory, like I think that would have actually been a good thing to take. Um, so moving on, I didn't take any summer classes between grade 11 and 12. Uh, so the summer between grade 11 and 12, I had other extracurricular things that I wanted to do. Stay tuned and watch another video if you want to hear about what extracurriculars and things I got up to. Um, so grade 12, so I did nothing over the summer, like no courses over the summer. So grade 12, I took AP Calculus, I took AP Chemistry, I took Chemistry 12, I took Law 12, I took Physics 12, I took French, and I took English. I also on the side self-studied AP Biology and challenged the exam on my own. I believe at that time, something that I think I was a bit sad about was that I think our school wasn't offering more AP programs than that. I know some other schools do. So um, maybe when you're choosing high schools, take, if you want to take more AP courses, take that into consideration. I definitely think taking the course is a lot easier than me studying on my own. Um, so, or did I, did I take the AP Biology? Did I take AP Biology when I was in grade 11? I can't remember, but I self-study for AP Biology at some point. And so... Anyways, overall, those are my courses. 
Um, a question that I don't really find necessary, I don't find knowing other people's GPA that helpful, but I know this is a common question that you guys have sent in and asked. Uh, I calculated my overall average um, from high school as well as 95 and also my grade 12 average was 95. So this is actually not as high as I'd like it to be. I have friends whose averages were in the high 90s that are uh, my classmates in medical school. So it's, um, I'm like a little, a little ashamed that it's not higher to be honest. Um, some factors that um, to take into consideration that uh, might change your grades if you're anything like me. Um, the music program was a very loving community. All my friends were in it. We go on cool trips. The teachers are awesome. Um, however, there's a catch. All my friends got amazing grades in music. I did not. The worst grades that I got on my transcript to this day are actually on my music courses. I think I have like an 86, that kind of thing. Whereas like, you know, take doing well in math or chemistry just came a lot easier to me. And I think, I think I have partial tone deafness and I think that's the main factor. Um, so I actually stopped uh, taking music courses after I was in grade uh, 10. So if you don't have any problems with like doing well grade wise, I think it's very fun to keep continuing. And most people say the music, being the music program was the most uh, supportive and helpful environment to be in. I uh, did continue to be, con be involved in music. I led a club called Music Outreach Society. So I got to get to work together with friends and we would perform. Um, I would organize concerts uh, for people who are disadvantaged in some way and we would put on concerts and kind of customize what kind of music they would want. I'm not a good musician, but I'm very passionate about community service and being a good leader. I actually have never told my friends this, why I dropped out of music is just because I have bad grades. Uh, <laughs> So if someone's watching this is going to think this is kind of funny. I also really struggled in physical education. Initially, uh, my initial grades in very the first term, I believe, of first year was like an 84, 85. It was just under the cusp of getting A and I was really bitter about getting this like 1B. Um, <laughs> and so for us, at least when I was going to school, getting a grade in PE was purely based on physical activity. It had nothing to do with participation marks. I know some some schools are lucky. It's just about like showing up and participating and how keen you are to do activities. Ours was about pure physical activity. So we would do, uh, we would have to meet certain speed time standards on running the six lap. We have to meet, you have to meet, do 21 push push-ups um, in a row to make the, like a, a, like a 10 out of 10 grade. We did um, suicide runs. It's also known as the beep test. So you keep running back and forth and like sprinting faster and faster until you run out. So there was a certain standard too that you had to meet. Um, there was also one where you had to run, I believe like 3.4K or something like that. And you also, it was a timed run. So, and like also what your flexibility was. So basically lots of physical ability stuff. And it's the same standards, no matter what height you are and whatever physical conditions you have. So it was actually quite hard. So I'm on the shorter side, I would say like about five or three or so and there were girls in my class that were like six feet and so you can see how it's a lot easier to run um run the same number of six laps in a lower amount of time if you just have huger stride like i'm making excuses but um so in the in the way in the end i managed to get myself a good grade i really tried to i started doing regular strength training and re running regularly just because i wanted a really good gpa and was really diligent about it there was there were some limits i obviously couldn't overcome so my PE teacher was really nice about this. And if your PE teacher doesn't already offer this, you can maybe make a deal. He made a deal with some of us that didn't do very well, uh, just physically, was that if you were willingly able to run extra, so every Friday after school, he would host an extra six lap run. And this would occur in the snow, in the rain. If you ran that, you got an extra bonus point. So I did the maximum number I, I could do to boost my grade up into an A. So. Again, that, those, that set up really good athletic habits, um, but it was really motivated by grades. So anyways, I suggest that both for your health benefits, but if you need to try to pass uh, PE, that's one way to go. Anyway, overall, it's a good thing. So those were the courses that I found um, really challenging to get a good uh, grade in. So that's kind of my overall review of, so let me know. So overall, let me know if there's any questions about details about the courses. This has been a really long time for me since I've been in high school, but hopefully that's a little bit helpful for you in terms of course selection. And by no means take this as like the way to do it. It's just like a way that worked for me. And I think if I had taken courses in any other uh, selection, that would have been just as fine and it would have ended up here anyways. So anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.